Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. It's starting to get a little bit cold again. And when we were in the Tetons, I had an issue with the old furnace again. You know, I had a video before about how to get into that for this Dometic furnace in a Keystone Cougar with no access panel outside. This video is going to be how to do it easier because I've done it like four or five times now. And uh, I'm getting kind of professional at it, if you know what I mean. So I'm also going to make a couple of changes this time. I've got a new cell switch to put in. I got this one on Amazon. This is the uh, factory part, I believe, but it will, I mean, it fits it, but just so you know, Steve uh, over at Shelburne RV, he told me that a better fix, I'd already ordered this one and I forgot that he told me that before, but it's usually to put a suburban cell switch in there. I don't know what model fits, but that's just something to look into. As well as I found out that Last time in my video, um, which the whole cutting thing I was afraid of is easily solved if you wear gloves, but you know, you have to twist those vent shafts a certain way so the keyhole comes out so those will pop out. I found out it's way easier just to use a nut driver and loosen the uh, hose clamps there, but we're gonna do one better. We're gonna use these suckers right here. I got them off of Amazon. I put a link down below. As usual, it is an affiliate link, but it's a four inch, hose clamp should fit but you don't have to have a nut driver anymore or a wrench or anything like that because these have the little uh, wing nuts on there you don't need any tools so that way it comes easy breezy I don't know what's going on with this thing um, I'm pretty sure it's the cell switch it's just very finicky so every time I've took it apart it started working fine with no issues. It's just like, it likes being took apart. But there's never any dog hair on it. There's never any uh, dirt or anything all on the cell switch. And the fact that it runs whenever I put it back together for a day or two tells me that it's the cell switch and not the heat limit switch or the motherboard or any of that other weird stuff, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna walk you through how I do it. I've already got the panel off to kind of save a little bit of time. So what's step one when you're working on the furnace? Come on, what's step one? You know what it is, you know what it is. It's to turn the gas off. So let's go turn the gas off. So as you guys know from my propane video, I only run one tank on. I couldn't remember which one was on. So it's not this one, this one's cut off, which I was gonna check it anyway. So we'll shut that up. That means that this is the hose we're using. Turn this one off. This one does have the gauge on there. The, hub, the other one had the gauge on there. I found the gauge pretty much useless. It just basically tells you when it's out anyway. So now we have the gas off. So what do we do? We got to go in and we got to purge the gas out of the line. That way, whenever you loosen the gas line, it doesn't just blow gas up in your face with whatever is left in the line and risk catching on fire if you happen to have an open flame around. Okay, so to purge the gas out of the lines, the easiest way is to go to the stove, open the cover up, Turn an eye on or two. Usually one will do it because it'll usually only last a second. But it's lasting a second, so let's go ahead and turn two on. And it'll just burn out. No more gas in the line. Be sure to turn those eyes off though. It's a good way to waste a whole bunch of gas when you turn it back on. So that's a good way to waste a whole bunch of gas when you turn it back on and it's not too safe either but i have had a whole tank go out because of that nobody was in the camper but i think somebody leaned up against it or something so let's turn the gas off all right so whenever we loosen this off we want to support this side over here I'm not really twisting or anything you're just supporting it would be better if i had two wrenches i'm not sure where my other wrench went be real easy with this brass line because you don't want to kink it or anything so what I usually do is just kind of put it back there you'll still get a little hint of uh, gas smell when you do that by the way just don't be smoking next I got my gloves on so this one I still do uh, this way you just turn it so that key hole lines up and it'll just pop right off. You just line that up, it'll come out and you pull it up. 
that one's easy breezy. The rest of them over here on the sides, they're hard to do. These on the sides are hard to do because you can't see the keyhole or anything. So that's why I found it easier to use a nut driver. So you just loosen that up a little bit and then you just slide them off. Instead of just taking this whole piece off, what you can do. All right, so we're just gonna take the other three of them off. All right, so those are all disconnected. So now we're gonna take our screws out here to release the furnace. And just for these two screws, it's not worth getting the drill out or anything like that. All right, so now everything is unhooked except for the electrical. All right, so now everything's unhooked except for the electrical. And those wires are up here. I don't think they had connectors on them before. Um, Shelburne's worked on this once for me. And I think they added those so they could take it out and bench test it. And then, of course, it worked fine and worked for a year before we had any issues. So, what we're going to do is pull this sucker out of there. So we're ready to pull it out. Got my gloves on. Um, I don't pull it all the way out because electrical, I don't want to worry about having to disconnect that. Just watch out for the electrical line and this gas line, everything else should be fine. Now you have to pull this straight out because it's connected to the exhaust in the back. Which is the only thing you have to line it up with when you put it back. So after you pull it out and disconnect it from the exhaust, you should be able to twist it around. Trying to not cut any holes in my ducts here. Just twist it on around. We're going to go all the way. This is your sail switch right here. This is the piece that I'm going to be uh, changing out. On the Cougar group that I'm in, they had this actually, they said that if you opened up this piece of plastic that, that this holds, then sometimes you don't have an issue with it. I did that on the last go round and it failed, so we're taking it out. All right, so to take the cell switch off, now let's disconnect the power first. Now I have not turned the power off, and so this still has 12 volt power. Let's keep that in mind. Alright, so here's your cell switch. So this cell switch just screws on with two screws of this plate. And that plate, where it goes together, is what I had read, just doesn't have enough room there. And supposedly it's got a bigger cutout on the new ones. So I did cut that out a little bit. It didn't really make a difference. Now it still clicks whenever you're doing this. Um, my guess is, is it's something in this that's causing that causing this to not work one way or the other even though it seems to be halfway okay because if I just hooked it back up it would try to light I guarantee it so we're going to go ahead and put the new one in so in order to get this off I take these two screws out So then there's that. And then the new one goes on there with the same two holes. All right, so new switch is on there. Put it back in, so. It goes right inside like that. 
These two screws just go right back where they were. All right, then these get hooked back up. The devil one was in the back. And then this one here. All right, so the next steps, we're basically gonna bench test this. So the gas line is still disconnected, but it's turned off. There's no gas coming through. Whenever I turn the heat on, this should start cycling. The fan just start blowing. That's going to hit the cell switch, knock it back from the air pressure, which is going to tell the board or whatever over here that there can't be any gas just building up right there. And then it's going to try to ignite. The ignition's what I wasn't getting before. So we'll see what happens now. That's the sound of it trying to ignite. So now we're going to flip it back around. Being careful of our gas hose and our ducts so we don't tear a hole of them in them with the corner. Hardest part just getting that to slide back in there is getting that exhaust in the right spot. I can't really reach my hand back in there and feel exactly where it is, but you know it's in the right spot if you can get to both of these screws. You do want to go outside and verify that you feel the exhaust coming out when we get done though. Let's go ahead and just hook this gas line up while we're thinking about it. Compression fitting. Some people put pipe dope and stuff on there. They're not supposed to need it. whatever your preference is there. I'm not a professional. All right, so now we're gonna do some leak testing. You can just use soapy water, but I have leak detector. Just because I'm lazy and I don't like to mix soapy water. So we're gonna put that all around there and drip it all on the floor. So no big bubbles there. That should be fine. So now we're gonna fire it up and see if it works. You can hear the burner now. Can't feel anything there. Over there on the vent. Feel air starting to warm up there so we're working all right so the heater works um we're gonna go test the vent make sure all the the exhaust is coming out of the vent but i did want to say my plan failed um i'm not so sure about the cell switch right now hopefully that plan's fixed but the issue i'm having is those hose clamps those hose clamps the finger tighten ones that didn't work out so well on one side, I just put the regular hose clamps back on there. On the other side, it was, I figured it would be okay. It would just be hard to get like tight the first time and then you wouldn't have to adjust them that much. But in order for them to be tight enough where they would stay, you really had to crank down on that little wing nut. And it's probably the design of this particular hose clamp. It just didn't work out. You could barely even twist it where it was hard enough. So. I want to keep those hose clamps that came off of there. I'm probably going to put them back on if I have to do this again, which hopefully it will be a long time from now. All right, so let's go check on the exhaust. And that's coming out like it's supposed to. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.